Now, already I have given a message to you that small change is the syllabus of economics this year. So, what we uh, what we have taken what we have taken till this is neither. But the first portion what we have taken a few is there that we have to explain. So we will go with the explanation. So who is a consumer? A consumer is a person who buys goods and things according to his wish. That is, that is a consumer. In this chapter we are studying about the consumer behavior. How consumer is behaving with a situation. So, in order to study the consumer behavior, we have three approach. That is, cardinal utility approach by Alfred Marshall and ordinal utility approach by J.R. Peets and revealed reference hypothesis by Paul A. Samuelson. This we discussed in the last class. That is the first class of this lesson. But, now, we have to study this cardinal utility approach as well as ordinal utility approach in detail. So, already we discussed about budget line consumption and uh, what are the changes that will happen to the budget line if income and price of the consumer changes. Till that, it is needed. And before that, we have to complete this cardinal utility approach by Alfred Marshall and ordinal utility approach by J.R. Hicks. See, this approach is to measure the utility. What do you mean by utility? Utility means a one satisfying power of a community. If I am purchasing a particular community, how much I am getting a satisfaction from that community is known as utility. Before entering to the theory, there is a preliminary notation and assumption. Throughout this chapter, we have to follow this assumption. That is, a consumer in general consumes many goods. But for simplicity, let us assume that there are only two goods. They are good one and good two. Any combination of amount of two goods is called consumption. So throughout this chapter, whether it is ordinal utility approach or cardinal utility approach or budget then keep it in your mind that consumer can purchase n number of goods according to his wish. But for the simplicity, we are assuming that, assuming that is the just assumption, moving here, we are assuming that consumer is purchasing only two commodities. Commodity good one and good that is x1 and x2 or x or y. Now, utility. What do we mean by utility? Utility is the one satisfying power of a commodity or service. And utility is subjective. Utility is subjective. That means utility will be different, different from person to person. That means the utility that I am getting from a particular commodity will be different than that of yours. For example, I am taking one orange. See, what is the utility I am getting? It will be different than that of yours. Utility will be different. That is what utility is subjective. Different individuals can get different level of utility. Utility means satisfaction from the same commodity. Utility that one individual gets from the commodity can change with the change in place and time. See, utility that we are getting, utility may change according with the according to the time and place. For example, the use of heater, the use of heater in Jammu Kashmir and Rajasthan. See, if you are comparing, the utility of using heater will be more in Jammu and Kashmir because they are displaced and time and climate that requires the heater. But Rajasthan is already hot climate, so it doesn't require 
what this heat. So, okay, so utility is differ from time and place. And rational consumer will try to maximize utility. A very consumer will try to maximize the utility. That means maximize the satisfaction level. Now, cardinal utility analysis by Alfred Marshall. Cardinal utility analysis by Alfred Marshall. Cardinal utility analysis assumes that consumer satisfaction can be measured in terms of cardinal numbers. In other words, utility can be expressed in numbers. See, according to Alfred Marshall, according to Alfred Marshall, the utility can be measured in terms of number 1, 2, 3, like that. For example, 1 apple or 1 kg of apple I have and I am taking it, I am getting 1, number 1 utility. That is, utility can be measurable in numbers. That is the cardinal utility analysis by Alfred Marshall. Before entering to the theory, we have to discuss about the measures of utility that is total utility and marginal utility total utility and marginal utility now we will discuss about the total utility total utility it refers to the total satisfaction obtained from the consumption of all possible units of a particular commodity Let's see. see it is the total satisfaction that we are getting from a particular commodity the total satisfaction that we are getting from a purchase of a particular commodity is known as total utility. More of commodity provide more satisfaction to the consumer. If you, are, if you have more commodity, it gives more satisfaction to the consumer. Therefore, PUN refers to the total utility derived from consuming n units of commodity n. See, T U n, total utility T U n, that is total utility n, n means n number of commodity. Now, marginal utility. Marginal utility is the change in total utility due to the consumption of additional units of a commodity. For example, I am purchasing the same commodity once again I am purchasing additional purchase. Due to additional purchase, what happens to the utility? That is what marginal utility. If I am purchasing 1 kg of apple, after that again I am purchasing 1 kg of apple, that is additional, from that additional purchase, what is the utility I get? That is what marginal utility. Marginal utility always shows a declining trend. Marginal utility shows a declining trend. Now, MU can be calculated as the equation for marginal utility is MUN is equal to TUN minus TUN minus 1. TUN minus TU n minus 1. So, whereas MU n is the marginal utility from nth come nth unit, this last unit, and TU n is the total utility from n units, total commodity, n means total commodity, and TU n minus 1 means total utility from n minus 1 unit, n minus 1 unit, n is the number of units of consumption. Now, total utility and marginal utility can be related in following way. Which is TU in total utility is equal to MU1 plus MU2, MU3, etc. MUN minus 1 plus MU. And this is the equation to find out the total utility. Now, law of diminishing marginal utility. I hope you understood. Uh, this total utility and marginal utility. Already we discussed about marginal utility and total utility in previous class. Now, law of diminishing marginal utility. It is Professor Alfred Marshall who popularized this theory 
and he uses the cardinal utility approach in his analysis. A law of diminishing marginal utility states that as a consumer takes more and more units of a particular commodity, the marginal utility of additional units grows diminishing. For so example, you are taking apple. See, if you have taken one apple. After that, again I am giving apple to you. you Sometimes you will take but the satisfaction that is getting from the apple will decrease. Again and again if I am giving what will happen? You will at last you will say that it is enough. That is what if we are consuming more and more of a particular commodity. The utility that is getting from that commodity is diminishes. For example you have blue shirt. Again and again you are purchasing blue color shirt or blue color materials. What will happen? The utility that is getting from that particular commodity, you will think that I have enough color. I have uh, the enough shirt with this color. Why should I purchase the same color? Why can't I go with the next one? So that is what the sat satisfaction that I am getting from that we are getting from particular commodity is decreasing. Satisfaction that is that we are getting from a particular commodity is decreasing. That is what the law of diminishing marginal utility. So before going to the theory, we have to discuss the assumptions of the law of diminishing marginal utility. That is, consumer is rational. Consumer is rational. As human being, he is all human beings are rational human beings. That is, he have the thinking capacity according to his decision only he will be purchasing. And consumer is consuming homogeneous things. That means, what do you mean homogeneous? Homo means same. Homogeneous goods means he is not, for example, if he is purchasing apple, he is purchasing apple only. He is not purchasing orange or mango or banana. Okay, he is only consuming with the apple. And there is no hand lagging consumption. There is no. If today he is purchasing and after one week he is purchasing, it is not like that. Continuously he is purchasing the same commodity. And utility is measurable in terms of numbers. We can measure utility in terms of numbers. It is 1, 2, 3, like that. And utility is subjective. That means utility will be different from person to person. It will be different from one person to See, already we discussed that uh, how to find the marginal utility and total utility. How to find marginal utility that is M U N U is equal to T U N minus T U N minus 1. Based on this equation, we have to find out marginal utility. For example, T U. Total utility of the first unit of consumption is 10. So the marginal utility will be 10. And how we will find out marginal utility? We have to find out marginal utility based on this equation. That is T U N. T U N means second consumption. T U N minus 1, that is 2 minus 1, it is equal to how much? 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So that is T U N is equal to 22 minus 10. So the marginal utility. Well, then next one that is TUN means 30, 3 0 and TUN minus 1 that is 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1 that is 2, 3 minus 1 that is 2. So 22 which is equal to H, equal to H. Again the next one TUN means 36, N minus 1, TUN minus 1 that is 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 means 3. So, third one is 30. 3 is 6. The next one, that is fifth one, length. That is fifth one, that is TUN means 40. 40 minus TUN minus, that is 5 minus 1, that is 4. 4 to 40 unit consumption total, total utility is 36. So, 40 minus 36 is equal to 4. Next one, that is 6th one. 6th one, that is PUN is equal to 42. 6th, 6 minus 
minus 1 is 5. 50 unit consumption is 40. 42 minus 40 is 2. Next one. Seventh one. That is PU n is equal to 42. 42 minus 7 minus 1. 6 to 6 to 1 is equal to is 42. So 42 is equal to C O. And next one is 8 to 1. 8 to 1 PU n is equal to 40. 40 minus 42. 40 minus 42 is equal to minus 2. Is equal to minus 2. Now you understood that how we call marginal utility. So equation for finding marginal utility is mu n is equal to p u n minus p u n minus 1. If we are adding this marginal utility we will get the total utility. For example, 12 plus 8, 22. Huh? Then 22 plus 8, 30. And 30 plus 6, 36. Again, 36 plus 4, which is 40. That is what the next equation that is to find the total utility v u n is equal to m u 1 plus m u 2 plus m u mu3 etc. mu n mu n minus 1 plus mu n mu n that is the equation for finding total utility. Based on this we have to draw the total utility curve and marginal utility curve. Okay, based on this table we have to draw the total utility and marginal utility curve. And based on this we have to draw the total utility curve and marginal utility curve. Okay, we will do this. So, in order to draw the marginal utility, utility curve, we have to draw like this. And this is x-axis, this is y-axis. Here we have to take number of units. Number. Here we have to take number of units. Number of here we have to take marginal utility and total utility. Okay. Now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 8. Number of units up to 8. Then, the total utility and marginal utility is this. So, we have to, accordingly, we have to take the values. That is, like this, we get a 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45. Now, first we can plot the values of total unity. One number of unit total unity is 10. But 2 it is 22, 22, here, 2 it is 22, then 3 it is 30, 3 it is 30, 3 it is 30, then 4 it is 36, 36, 5 it is 40, and 6 it is 42, 6 it is 42, 6 it is 42 and 7, 7 also it is 42, 7 also it is 42 and 8 it is 40, 8 it is 40, 8 it is 40. Now if you are joining this line, we will get the total utility curve that is PU curve, total utility curve. Now, we have to plot the values of marginal utility. Okay, plot the values of marginal utility. For 1, it is 10. For 1, it is 10. And for 2, it is for 2, it is 12. For 2, it is 12. Then, for 3, it is 8. 3, it is 8. And for 4, it is 6 it is 4 it is 6 and 5 it is 4 or 5 it is 4 and 4 for 6 it is 2 for 6
six it is two and for seven it is zero for seven it is zero for eight it is minus minus two so minus two so if we are joining the length if we are if we are joining the lengths we will get the mu we will get the mu See from here we can understand that this is very important. When the total utility is maximum, marginal utility is zero. When the total utility is maximum, marginal utility is zero. This is what the law of diminishing marginal utility. That is, if we are taking, if we are purchasing additional and additional units of or additional units of consumption, the total utility is increasing and then diminishing by right? till this it is increasing after that it is diminishing. So the total utility increasing and then diminishing by right? when the total utility is reaches maximum, that is our consumption if we have maximum satisfaction, that then marginal utility becomes zero. When the total utility is maximum, the marginal utility becomes zero. When the total utility starts falls, when the total utility starts falls, marginal utility becomes negative. We will put salary by today again and again. We will put the data in the same way. We will correct and you will feel omitting. That is what negative. Okay, marginal utility is negative. We are taking apple. You know, apple by the end of the day, you know, like on the right side, I got to the end of the day, satisfaction of the day, you know, then again and again, if you have what will happen, the total utility is maximum, but the additional satisfaction that you are getting is zero. And again and again, what will happen, total utility starts to fall at the same time, marginal utility also becomes negative. Become negative. Okay, I think it is clear. This is all about law of diminishing marginal utility. And why demand curve slopes down? Down. Why demand? What is what do you mean by demand? Demand is the ability and willingness of a person to purchase a commodity. Is the ability and willingness of a person to purchase a commodity. And why demand curve slopes? Downward and demand power is a downward sloping demand power, and there is inverse relationship between price and uh, commodity. And why demand power slopes downward because of this law of diminishing marginal utility. That is, marginal utility is decreasing at that time if what you will do the demand of the particular commodity will decrease. You won't purchase the commodity. With that particular price. Okay, marginal utility problem in this sub we can number our demand amount here demand problem. So why demand curve stops downward? We are discussing in the upcoming class. My topic is the demand law of demand that is influencing demand and why demand curve stops downward. In that area, again we have to discuss the same concept. In the next class, we will discuss with the ordinal utility, and this is the power for you. And from this table, you have to find out uh, the value of marginal utility and total utility, and you have to draw the marginal utility and total utility.